So we've seen before how we look at restricting the domain and why we do that to get inverse functions. Okay, but I just want to do a reiteration of it just to kind of make it clear before we start looking at uh, the inverse trigonometric functions. So let's say we've got this value of x and what I'm doing is I'm putting it into this function machine and what I'm getting out is a value of y. Okay, and the fact that if I put in 1, so I put in a value, and I get out 1 value, this is what constitutes a function. I don't put in 1x and get out 2 or more values of y. If, it is that, if that's the case, this is not a function. Okay, So 1 input creates 1 output. Now, for some... Uh, functions that we meet, there are actually a few different values of x that I could put in to get out the same y. So sine, cos and tan are examples of this because they're periodic. They're periodic functions. So the fact that if I draw sine Okay, then I could choose a value of x there. That will give me a value of y. However, there are other values of x that will give me the same value of y. Okay, now that's perfectly fine. Okay, as a function. So these multiple values of x's can give me the same value of y. This is still a function because I'm putting one input through the function and I'm getting out one output. Okay? Although there are multiple inputs I could use to get the same output, I'm only putting one of these through okay, to getting the output. Now the problem is when you reverse the direction, if you think about, right, well, if I'm putting in my value of y, int back through the function, reverse engineering it, I'm then getting multiple values of x, okay? Which means that the inverse function going back through that process would no longer be a function. It's fine going one way, but going the other way, it doesn't work. So what I must do is I must restrict the domain to stop it from actually having multiple values that it can get. Because now, if there's only one value of x that I can put in to get that y, then putting the y back in will only identify one value of x as its inverse. And so if I cut the function and restrict the domain, to a piece of it, then I actually now only have one input, one output when I do the inverse function. And that's where we're going to be going with restricting the domain to build in arc sine, arc cos and arc tan, the inverse trigonometric functions.